Right, so there's an election rolling around in the none too distant future. I don't know whether you might have heard a thing or two about that rumour on the grapevine. You must have heard something somewhere along the lines. And for those of us who have seen a general election or two in our times, we know this invariably results in whatever party is currently in power, no matter how awful they've been, how terrible their policies might have been for us personally or for the country, no matter how many times they've tutted and sucked air through their teeth going... Oh, we can't afford to do this, that or the other. Magically, in the run-up to an election, they find some money to say, oh, yes, we can. They can manage to find something to try and bribe us, the electorate, with. And so it goes with current Chancellor of the Exchequer, Jeremy Hunt. But when the Tories have been in power for 13 years and have been so catastrophically bad as they have with the economy, how can they possibly find a sweetener or two now that could possibly appeal to us? Easy! Let's punish those who never vote for them. To bribe those who might and... Actually, what Hunt is cooking up might as well have come out of Liz Truss's playbook. Tory sweeteners inevitably mean talk of tax cuts. But having seen the economy flatlining for years, pretty much now, and Brexit having done it absolutely no favours either, are tax cuts really something that we need to talk about right now? Are they really befitting us at this point in time? If he's going to give out some completely unnecessary, economically stupid, public spending restricting tax cuts out at this moment in time, in order to be seen laughably as financially credible to some people, he has to look like they've got to be paid for somewhere. And so his answer to that is apparently going to be to hammer benefit claimants yet again. Because when isn't that always popular with the frothing right-wing voters and the equally rancid right-wing media such as Andrew Pearce? Now, just as an aside, for those of you familiar with the fact that I did a video about Andrew Pearce and what he said about benefit claimants the other day, just as an example of how not credible some of our media are, I had something rather unusual happen the other day. Just as a, a brief aside here. I did a video on Andrew Pierce's benefit bashing comment in his Mail Online column the other day. And as is my usual practice on YouTube, I put links to articles mentioned in my video into the description so people can check these things out themselves, not just necessarily take my word for stuff. You can check what I'm saying against other material because I take pride in my research. Funny thing is, though, I got a content removed email from YouTube afterwards, not to remove my video, which is what I thought it was to start with, horrified it was, but to remove one of these source links. And their justification for it was that they felt it violated their spam, deceptive practices and scams policy. Well, the link they removed just happened to be the link to Andrew Pierce's article. His vicious attack on benefit claimants was viewed by YouTube as deceptive, as a scam or as spam behaviour. If that doesn't nail right-wing media narratives on benefits, when even a global multi-billion pound corporation like Google, who own YouTube, won't allow such narratives to pervade or even be linked to, even in a video that was tearing those same narratives a new one, that really does say something about our press, doesn't it? Needless to say, for the sake of my channel, I won't be linking to mail articles ever again, even if I happen to be challenging something they happen to be saying. But back to the, the main point here. We've got a government essentially jumping on that same bandwagon as Andrew Pearce, though. Hunt is mulling over a real terms cuts to benefits in the midst of a cost of living crisis, with food bank queues growing ever longer, at the same time fewer people are able to contribute to them. So we can give tax cuts to people that probably don't need it. Those on benefits may be in work themselves, for one. So a tax cut to them, paid for by a benefit cut also affecting them, will do nothing for their incomes whatsoever. They may be disabled and unable to work. They may be long-term sick. But, of course, Mel Stride at the DWP is reforming things there so that by the nature of how the government measures sickness, rather than by any measure of people getting better, many of these people will likely soon be found fit for work again. And we saw what happened before there, didn't we? 120,000 people died after being found fit for work. So clearly they weren't if it ended up killing them. So a tax cut to whom is going to incentivise them to vote Tory, in which case it'll be businesses, the corporations, the wealthy, workers already on high wage packets, perhaps earning enough that they don't need Social Security to boost their incomes. Clearly not those struggling the most. They're the ones who will end up being targeted. But the sweeten around just before an election, it's never about that. It's about convincing people who might vote Tory that they're still worth a vote. And they do this every time because it works. People will see this selfishly as a benefit to them, whether they need it or not. And it doesn't matter if within months of getting back into power for another five years, 
the Tories reverse it all again. They'll have pulled off the con. You'll have fallen for it once again. They're in power for another five years. More damage to be done. Stuff you. You won't be needed for another five years. And then perhaps they'll come back with the same sweetness to you again. Will you be fooled again and again and again? And it's all about making our lives hell all over again. If Tory sweeteners are convincing you to vote for them here and now, you've got the memory of a bloody goldfish. Of course, this is exactly what Liz Truss tried to do in her epic shambles of a budget too. Uncosted tax cuts did for the country. Sent mortgages spiralling, piled on a ton of debt. Which is why if you cut taxes, you've got to cut spending elsewhere, not to pay for them, but to offset them. Because remember, taxation doesn't pay for anything in and of itself. The more tax a government takes, the more money it can then print to spend on other things. But if you're a government set on cutting taxes, then you are also at the same time cutting your own ability to spend on, for example, public services. Therefore, to cut taxes requires a cut in spending too. And Hunt's choice is to hit benefit claimants because they don't vote Tory as a rule. In fact, a great many of them don't vote at all. So there's no political incentive to ever help such people. By not voting, therefore, as a demographic, as too many of the poorest in society tend not to do, you end up a political target, in fact, a political football to kick around in order to attract the votes of those that do vote. Another excuse they could use to justify hitting benefits is if inflation does fall, as is still being predicted, and which Rishi Sunak has staked his name to, of course, when inflation was high, benefits got uprated by 10%. That was a big uprating, but it was still below inflation at that point. But inflation has now fallen below 10%. The Tories, being the abject horrors they are, could justify cutting benefits back to match that drop in inflation. But that ignores the freeze to benefits that has never been made up for that was justified by austerity under Cameron and Osborne. Therefore, benefits still remain too low anyway. Such a move would ensure that remains the case, worsens. And again, I'll repeat, a great many people on benefits are working. 40% of universal credit claimants are in work. Here's another reason this is stupid too. Official figures for the economy show that it's contracted, i.e. shrunk, by 0.5% in July. The government are getting a battering over this. Now, much of the press will be saying, oh, it's been a terrible summer. The weather's been awful, and that's why. And they're also blaming strike action for killing off the economy too. Damn you, Mick Lynch, and all of that. Hardly the fault of workers literally not getting by or feeling their industry isn't safe for them or their clientele, patients in hospitals, for instance, passengers on the railways. So they're going to go on strike to stand up for a better deal, better pay terms and conditions. Why people do it? But the economy is, of course, driven by people spending too. Give a tax cut to a rich man. Alan Sugar will appreciate it, I'm sure. He's still spitting rivets as he is found, found out he is, in fact, a UK resident for tax purposes. And he doesn't like that at all. But they won't spend it. They won't make their money work in the economy. It'll go into his Scrooge McDuck style money bin and never be seen again unless he chooses to go swimming in it. Those on benefits tend to spend all their disposable income because they have to, to survive, to get by. If they had more, if they were given enough to live, in fact, and not just exist, survive, the economy would actually grow more. Tax cuts, from an economic perspective, are idiotic. If you want to see the economy grow and the country start to do well, then taxation is the fee you pay to see that happen. It needs to be fair. It isn't right now. I completely agree with that. If Hunt wanted to offer tax cuts to the poorest workers and offset that with tax rises on the rich, that would make absolute perfect economic sense. Of course, they won't do that because they don't care about the economy or people or this country. They just care about hanging on to power by appealing to certain people for their votes by offering them sweeteners they don't need and do nothing to help society or the economy. We don't need tax cuts. We need a wealth tax. So this government can spend and invest again, put more money in the pockets of ordinary people who will spend it in the high street and get the economy growing, businesses benefiting, jobs being created and all the associated actions that follow from that. It really isn't a complex concept to grasp, but you will never find a mainstream media outlet or a mainstream party politician saying it right now. So I will repeatedly. And I hope you will, too. Perhaps you've watched this and you disagree with me entirely. Perhaps you're thinking, what would I know? Well, I just live it day to day like so many other people do in this country. But, you know, if I'm if if I'm so wrong, why don't you tell me why and justify that? Or am I right? In which case, who are you going to vote for since everybody seems to be talking about either tax cuts or not raising taxes at all as Labour are? Is there much hope of the economy getting fixed at this rate by either of them? Let me know in the comments below. Be part of the conversation. 
Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. Please like, share and subscribe if you did more content out daily. Meanwhile, here's a video recommendation where Labour and Rachel Reeves aren't making much different in their plans for the economy if you listen to her. In fact, she isn't even listening to her own economics advisor when it comes to a reversion to changing anything the Tories are already doing. And I'll hopefully see you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.